Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. We have reveals for a brand new archetype coming out of Age of Overlord. Very, very exciting stuff. You guys know I've been talking about how, uh, you know, I'm very excited to see what new archetypes come out of this set because we got none, literally no new archetypes in the set uh, before. Plus, this could be the set that kind of starts off a new a uh, set of like lore, uh, Visa Starfrost lore seems like it's ramping down a little bit. Um, we got some generic cards already revealed for this set, but like not necessarily a new archetype or anything. So this could be the beginning of that. They look awesome. They are based on Horus. I, I don't know a ton about Horus. I think he's he's the god of the sun or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know that much about him, but these cards look awesome. I love Egyptian based cards. Let's get into it. There's only six new cards here. I think it's four monsters. A spell and a trap but we'll see it as we go so let's get into it um you guys know i'm never looking for the next tier one meta threat but i do just want the decks the new decks to be competent good enough to play on a rogue level if you want okay this is the first monster here this is imcity glory of horus she looks awesome this is a dark spell caster effect monster level eight three thousand attack 1800 defense great stats great line up there for uh, statistics you can only special summon this card with its first effect once per turn and the second and third effects also once per turn if you control pharaonic sarcophagus you can special summon this card from your graveyard not from hand just from grave okay that's interesting hopefully there's easy ways to get this to grave you can send two cards from your hand to the graveyard including this card to add a pharaonic sarcophagus from your deck to your hand then draw one card Holy crap. Wow, that is so strong, right? I mean, obviously Ash is like kind of annoying there cuz you're obviously it's a, it's a neg one and this gets ashed, but if it doesn't, you're literally getting Pharaonic Guardian and or uh, Pharaonic Sarcophagus and drawing cards. So you literally go like break even in advantage. I'm assuming you're going to put the Pharaonic Sarcophagus on the field then this summons itself back for free. That's a straight up plus. And it's a generic, like, send a card from your hand to the graveyard. It is this cost, so it's not as effect, but there's a lot of stuff with graveyard synergy that will be really good with that. Very cool. Okay, sorry. Third effect. If another card or cards you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect while you control this monster, you can send one card on the field to the graveyard. Okay. Um, if this just said generically, if a card you control was sent to the graveyard while this card's on the field, you can like send a card on the field to the graveyard. It's still, it's a good form removal in, term of, in terms of non-targeting send, but the fact that it needs, it, it triggers by your opponent removing another card. Why would your opponent not just remove this card first? That way they don't give you a chance to trigger this. I don't love that. I do love this card. Otherwise, I'm assuming Phronic, Phronic Sarcophagus is a pretty central figure for this deck. So it searches that. It's a free extender otherwise, and it gets you. It draws you into your deck. It's a discard outlet. I, I don't hate this card otherwise, but um, I wish that third effect was a little bit better of a payoff. It's not a great interruption by any means. Okay, moving on next, we have... Jeez, Duamutef... Uh, blessing of horus he looks a little more egyptian overall i well no they both look pretty egyptian but he's got like the uh, the jackal vibe going on this is a water beast effect monster level eight zero zero so completely different types and attributes very interesting you can only special summon this card with its first effect once per turn third effect is a hard once per turn if you control pharaonic sarcophagus special summon this card from the graveyard so same thing only summons from grave doesn't summon from hand Gains a 1,200 attack and defense for each Horus monster you control. That includes itself, so it's 12-12 bare minimum. If you control another monster, it's 24-24. And then, obviously, with a full set of three, he'd be 36-36, which is pretty damn big. Okay. And the third effect, if another card or cards you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect while you control this monster, you can draw cards equal to the number of monsters with different names in your main monster zone. So... I guess that makes this a little bit more tolerable for me in that if you're going to put multiple of the, the Horus of monsters on the field, if your opponent doesn't have mass removal to remove them all at once, if they go for one, the other one will trigger. So it's like pick your poison kind of thing. Are you going to let me draw one to two cards off of uh, Duamutef or are you going to let me, you know, give me a send uh, off of Horus? 
Um, it still seems relatively doable to play around, which I don't love, but it is a little bit more punishing than I discussed before. Uh, this one's just mostly an extender, though. Definitely not nearly as impressive as uh, as in, in City is. All right, next up we have Happy, Happy Vanguard of Horus. I like this guy's artwork a lot. This guy looks really cool. Uh, this is a Wind Beast Warrior effect monster, level 8, 24, 16. By the way, all these guys are level 8, so we are potentially looking at a rank 8 package here. Um, you can only special them by first effect once per turn, and the second effect's a hard once per turn. If you control Pharaonic Sarcophagus, who would have guessed it? You can special summon this card from the graveyard. Totally cool. No problems there. Uh, if another card or cards you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect while you control this monster, target two cards that are banished and or in the graveyards, add either both to their owner's hand or shuffle both into the deck. So again, if we're able to set up all of these guys, then this deck becomes a lot more interesting because they have to respond to all of them all at once. Otherwise, you're getting some pretty cool triggers here. I mean, this guy being able to target any two cards in Grave or Banish and add them back uh, or shuffle them means, like, you could take something from your opponent's Grave, or even if they don't, you're not in a matchup where that matters, Ash Blossom. You know what I mean? Ash Blossom, Veiler, Ash Blossom, Impermanence, generic hand traps that you may have used early in the duel. That's, that's pretty cool. But again... All of these second effects trigger when your opponent removes something by card effect, which makes it so much harder. So unless we have an effect uh, kind of like Abyss Actors, where we can kind of, by negating an opponent's monster, change its effect to remove something, and then trigger all your guys, because these effects are strong when they pop off, I'm just not sure how consistently we're popping them off. All right, looks like the last main monster here is, oh my god, Kebes uh, this is Aegis of Horus. Uh, this is an Earth Wing Beast effect monster. Level 8, 25, 2000 for the stats. Summon effect is hard once return. Second effect is hard once return. If you control Sar Veronic Sarcophagus, special discard from the graveyard. Cool, nothing crazy. If another card or cards you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect while you control this monster, you can activate this effect. This turn, your opponent cannot target Horus monsters on the field for attacks. Also, your opponent cannot target them with card effects. That's by far the worst one. Wow, we this card is by far the worst card out of the bunch. Don't like him very much. All right, spell card. Here we go. Pharaonic Sarcophagus. This is what we've been waiting to see. If this card's crazy, then obviously things get a lot better here, but we'll see. Horus monsters, or sorry, the second effect's a hard monster turn. This is a continuous spell. I love the artwork on it. Horus monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects unless they target them. So, oh, so this does kind of protect your your monsters from blanket destruction. Now, other forms of removal that that are mass removal will still punish you here, but at least at least mass destruction is off the table here. I wish this was like sent to the graveyard because then you wouldn't be able to be Zeus. I think Zeus seems to be the big generic problem that this deck will have trouble dealing with, but okay. Second effect. You can send one card from your hand to the graveyard as cost to send a Horus monster from your deck to the graveyard. That's quite good. Again, this is a super generic hand uh, kind of outlet, discard outlet, and then it just gets any of your guys on the field, which by the way is just a free level 8. So even even this card generically, this see here's what I see about this engine more than anything so far. It's just a like rank eight spamming engine. Um, I mean, just thinking about uh, just opening glory, pitch glory with another uh, card to um, search Pharaonic Sarcophagus, uh, then draw. So you literally like still have a card in hand. Activate Pharaonic Sarcophagus, special summon glory. Then you get to Pharaonic Sarcophagus. Pitch a card from hand generically to pitch something else. If you're on a rank 8 strategy, maybe Gizmek Orochi, right? Then Gizmek Orochi is another 8. Um, or, an, again, Gizmek Orochi is a great pitch off of in, in City Glory of Horus. And then, boom, you could have three 8s just off of this package. So I, that's, like, the biggest thing to me. Sorry, I didn't even read the last effect. Once per turn, at the start of damage step, if your Horus monster battles an opponent's monster, you can send that opponent's monster to the graveyard. I mean, even more of an extra bonus. I mean, giving you a little bit of extra removal potential for, like I said, if we're playing that rank 8 strategy, that strategy wants to go second. 
So giving you even extra battle phase removal there is pretty nice. I, I don't hate this card because I was fully expecting this card to be like a complete brick. It is not. It is a it is a level eight. It's literally pitch a card from your hand to special summon a level eight monster, essentially. Uh, which is great. If it stays on the field, it means any of these level eights as turns go on will be able to just reborn themselves for free, which is cool. I don't hate that. Okay. And let's look at the last card here. This card I don't believe will be searchable, but we'll see. This is a, a Canopic Protector. It's a continuous trap, the second of X of hard ones per turn. Once per chain, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can special summon a Horus monster from your hand or grave. If you do, this turn, you cannot special summon another monster with the same original name with the effect of Canopic Protector. And second effect, if this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, you can set it, banish it when it leaves the field. Not so good. I thought this was going to be like an effect that gives you the ability to like, um, like negate something. It was going to be an interruptive card. It's not. Okay. So here we are. Um... At the end of this, um, this is not a deck on its own. Now, you know, listen, we've seen this in Konami time after time. We get the first wave. It's six to seven, eight cards. It's fine. And then the second wave comes out. And the second wave gives us just as many cards. We could get We could get a whole other six cards in the next core set. And it could be enough to fully round this archetype out. We don't know. I'm not going to assume anything just yet. But here's what I will say. I mean, I think that biggest thing is, is kind of what I started with. Is like, it's just kind of a, a, a level 8 engine that just puts level 8s on your field. Now, are you going to use rank 8s with them? We got the new rank 8 Buzz King from, um, from Animation Chronicle revealed a little bit ago. I know we already have a decent pool of rank 8 monsters. Um, I think about, like we, we talked about that... The Gizmek Orochi, whatever you want to call it. That. It, it. People have called it Gren Maju. There, there are builds that don't necessarily fully lean into Gren Maju, but play some other stuff. Uh, but whatever, that like going second OTK kind of strategy. This is a pretty good strategy. We talked about how much value each of these cards even offers generically. Uh, this card in particular is your best starter by far. Uh, Imsity and... Um, Pharaonic Sarcophagus is not bad either. So, I don't know. Is there a word where we play like three Imsity, one sarcophagus and maybe like just one of the other ones so you have another name to be able to dump and reborn and and kind of go from there maybe I, i'm not sure uh, other than that it, it's not enough on its own um if you have an idea of what else you can do right now with the deck in terms of other things that maybe it could work with as far as that that could really appreciate that level eight body that this deck seems to supply pretty well i'd love to hear your thoughts down below but other than that that's kind of what i'm thinking right now very curious to see where they go with this um like i said also talking about like the abyss actor stuff is there a world where they they give this deck a very easy kind of um what is it the abyss actor field spell that says like when your opponent activates a monster effect change that effect to like destroy your back row so that's how you would trigger um their really powerful effects from their um abyss scripts when they're destroyed by an opponent's effect what if we got something here that's like instead of just being an actual negate it's like change an opponent's effect to just like destroy one card your opponent controls and you get to pick which card your opponent is destroying and um when you do that's how you're able to much more consistently and effectively set up these like you know, float effects. I don't. I don't know if they're really float effects, but the trigger effects, like like send any card on the field of graveyard, non-targeting. That's pretty good. Draw one to three cards, probably. That's pretty good. Add any two cards in the grave back to the hand or shuffle them into the deck. That's pretty good. This is the only one that's really underwhelming, which is kind of a bummer because his artwork looks really freaking badass, but. Yeah, very interesting stuff here. I want to hear your guys' thoughts, though. Um, it is just a first drop on this stuff, so I didn't expect too much. It's not going to be great out, out the gate, I would expect. But obviously, feel free to let me know if you have a different impression on these cards. I'm out of here for tonight. I've rambled enough. Thank you so much for watching, as always. I really hope we keep like the news going this week with the set. Um, you know, we're going to have like 60 cards in like you know, 40 days pretty soon. So a lot coming. Hopefully it's strong and there's some cool stuff and I'll bring you that as it comes. So thank you so much for watching as always. Subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on all things Yu-Gi-Oh! news as it drops and I will uh, see you in the next video. Peace.